What's going on YouTube? It's Jordan Stupar. You've made it to my channel yet again. I appreciate you being here. Today, I've got a banger for you. I've got the unedited, uncensored, completely raw Q&A that I had with Gary Vaynerchuk down in Chattanooga, Tennessee a couple of weeks ago. Now, before I roll that clip, a couple of things I wanna address. One, I've been a big Gary Vaynerchuk fan for many years, ever since I read Jab, 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 Right Hook, which I've referenced in previous videos. One of the other things I wanted to mention is that I have have gotten a lot of value from Gary. He's not your just typical average, like more successful business person that just like kind of like avoids questions and gives you short answers. In fact, one of the things I want you to do while you roll this clip and actually watch this Q&A is I want you to look at how focused and like distraction free Gary Vaynerchuk is when he's actually talking with me or listening to my question or giving me an answer. Oftentimes, and I've had the opportunity to speak with a lot of high level business people, oftentimes you ask them a question, they're gonna give you a short answer that's ambiguous, that's esoteric, that is overgeneralized and really just kind of doesn't answer your question. And then you leave that interaction feeling a little bit unfulfilled or even sometimes a little bit upset at the person you spoke to because you were expecting some life-changing advice. So um, one of the things I want you to do is focus in on Gary Vaynerchuk's responses and uh, the way that he actually listens. The second thing that I want you to take away from this video is over the last couple of weeks, since this event in Chattanooga, Tennessee, Gary Vaynerchuk himself has been dropping content on the internet regarding his answers to questions at this event. And I wanna let you guys know, I haven't really seen him answering too many other people's questions other than mine. I don't think it's because he liked me better. I think it's because I spent a couple of days and hours really thinking about some high level questions, some sophisticated questions, and some really like just useful, like just awesome questions that I could literally get specific advice from. And Gary gave me some really specific advice. And I think his advice is something that's gonna be great for all of you guys to actually listen into. The last thing that I wanna say about this Q&A before I roll the clip and you guys can watch that is when you get advice from a heavy hitter in business, like Gary Vaynerchuk, if you have the opportunity, one, line up some really good questions, two, listen, three, take notes, and four, execute. If you have a mentor, if you have somebody in your space that's more successful than you and they're willing to spend some time coaching you or giving you some answers or some cheat codes to what it is that you're trying to accomplish, the last thing that you have to do and the most important thing that you have to do is execute. Take their advice and actually do what it is that they say to do because more often than not, your mentor, your coach, a Gary Vaynerchuk out there, somebody that you're talking to that you're looking for advice from, they will give you the right answers. The thing that you have to do afterwards is execute, which honestly is the reason why it's been taking a couple of weeks to get this content out is because I've been busy executing on all the advice that Gary Vaynerchuk gave me here in this video. So with that being said, I appreciate you guys being here on the channel. Hopefully you're able to enjoy this Q and A session that I had with Mr. Gary Vaynerchuk and uh, hopefully it provides you with some value and hopefully you're able to learn something. And most importantly, if you are able to learn something, please, go out and execute in your business as well. So with that, roll the tape. All right, so I have a question. Uh, my CRM, my SaaS company, um, basically it consists of about 72 different products within the product itself. And so it, it's pretty complex, sophisticated, and everybody has their own value system. If I called on you, you might be interested in five out of 72 of those things, but if I don't mention them up front, I get hung up on or tossed away. Okay. So my main issue is from a media standpoint of marketing and just from a, I'm calling you, crossing my fingers that you pick up, what do you think would be the best way to kind of condense the entire, you know, 72 products into one easy, simple to say, like, this is what the fuck we do? There's no way to condense 72 different value props quickly. Okay. I think one you need to look at, it. How, how long have you been doing it? We. We've been building it, developing it for two and a half years, and we've been in business for about a year. You may want to figure out if you have 72 features versus 72 products, first of all. Okay. You also need to figure out which 10 products the most convert. Okay. It's like any retail store or any dot com. Like what retailers are starting to figure out, I mean, this is the big challenge I'm going to push to my wine store. It used to be 
hey, Dad, it was my agenda. We have the biggest selection in the fucking world. We win. It's actually that became that becomes crippling. Right. And I've been trying to push my dad to create these WL50 stores where they're tiny stores with only 50 wines from the wine library. You know, because people don't actually want choice. It's why wine tax works. One product a day, very simple, boom. I don't want to think. So I think you're making people think too much. So I think that there's probably four products that are 80% of the actual action, and that's where my comms would come in, and you might be going on too much of an ideology that I have to get to all of these things. Right. I think you need to really look at usage. What I would do is look at usage. That's why I ask you how long. I would look at all the usage of the product, which is what's great about a SaaS business, and say, fuck, actually these six things right. are 80%, of, and that's gonna happen. Yep. Because some of those products are dog shit, and some of them yep. are the fucking thing. Yep. You just that's the nature of the game, right? <laughs> that. Then the other question that would lead me to is, how do I go into market if I was going to do paid media? I make a lot of content, um, and I try to do my best to kind of convey... Who's buying your product? Um, primarily an end user, an, a salesperson, or a small organization right now with maybe 10 salespeople in it. LinkedIn. You can do 25 pieces of content a day for LinkedIn, specific. When people think of salespeople as one thing versus a saleswoman who happens to be a Falcons fan, that's a whole different, you can, my game is in perpetuity. Right. People are like, salespeople, and I'm like, no, no, no. They're like, how do I make 100 pieces of content? I'm like, okay, well, first of all, there's 50 states. So, there's 50. <laughs> hey, Alabama. Hey, salespeople in Alabama. It's your boy. That's already 50, because I can promise you when you run ads against small businesses or sales organization in Alabama and it starts with what's up Alabama, that already does better than it says what's up, it's your boy Gary. True. I know true. it's true. You start then saying, you said then do that piece of content when the Auburn Alabama game is going on and you make some sort of <laughs> reference point that says, if you're an Auburn fan, leave a comment, or if you're a Bama fan, leave a comment in LinkedIn, whoever wins the game, that person gets 10% off, the other one gets to cry twice. <laughs> and I so like if you that. look at the collective reaction to that idea, <coughs> that's why I win. Because I'm in the game of ideas and then just making shit. Yep. LinkedIn is uncomfortably underpriced. Organic. Let alone paid. You need to go. <coughs> if you made no content anywhere else, which is so against my macro thesis, but if you didn't, and you made 100 pieces a day for LinkedIn, that was specific to psychographic, demographic, location, age, gender, sex, you will win. Crush it. Okay, that helps out a lot. And it's really, I know it will. And what's really awesome for me is it's gonna work. Yeah. I believe it. It's just, yeah. I, I it's always... kind of like believing that if you eat well and you work out every day, you'll look better. Right. I know you believe it. I'm telling you to fucking do it. What would you say would be the second best place? Nothing. Just LinkedIn. <laughs> Just meaning, meaning you can't imagine. You know what that would be like if, if we were like kids and only wanted to eat candy? Mm -hmm. And I literally walked in right now with a fucking truck full of candy. And you'd be like, yo, where else is there candy? I'm like, motherfucker, we can't eat all this candy. <laughs> so, so go push all my... That was, that was the question. So push all my chips on LinkedIn. Yep. And just destroy it. Yes, but bring them down. Of course. Well, like that's a challenge too. You know, like that's not so easy. I don't think it's terribly easy, but I think with enough content, I could start digging into where and then people start, are Correct, and then start reading comments. Yep. Ask questions. One of the things that very few people do is make content to ask questions. Mm -hmm. I love that. Because then you get answers in the comments, which then leads you to the next piece of content. Yeah. So much of my content is actually not made for any other thing than an insight to a hypothesis. It's how I got to all the content that I talk about today. I, there was no strategy session where I'm like, I'm gonna make content about parenting. That was a thing that happened out of making all the content that made me get to the realization of so many opportunities and vulnerabilities. Yeah. That's why it resonates. The reason my content resonates is it comes from the community. Thanks. Hopefully that little Q&A with Gary gave you a little bit of advice, a little bit of insight, and maybe some value or at least some entertainment in regarding how you can get active on social media. Now, obviously in my business here, 
sales domination system, it's great to be on LinkedIn because we are targeting uh, small, medium, and large businesses. And so it's ideal that I spend my time working on content for LinkedIn. So Gary, if you ever watch this one day, thank you again for your advice. It's the second time I've been able to uh, interact with you, ask you some questions, and has always provided me with a ton of value. And honestly, some of the content I've been put it, putting on LinkedIn, it's been paying off and there's just, there's a lot of growth there. So thank you. And with that guys, I appreciate you showing up to my channel. The question I wanna leave you with for the comments section, cause you guys know I love the comments is, what would you ask Gary Vaynerchuk if you had six, 10 minutes with the guy? What would you ask him? Put it in the comments below. And obviously, if there's more content that you'd like to see me post, please put it in the comments. And if you enjoyed this content, as always, hit that subscribe button. It means a lot to me to be able to provide you with value on a regular basis. And uh, other than that, I'm out for the day. It's a Saturday and I'm just in here getting down to work and taking care of some things and wanted to shoot this video quick. So thanks for joining me. I appreciate you guys. Take care. And if you're interested in dominating sales, just go to dominatesales.com. Talk to you guys soon.